So welcome back. So once again, I had a little fight with the set and I didn't back down again. No, 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 no. I'm definitely going to beat up the set every single chance I get in this. Now, of course, last we left off, I was about to head home when my phone vibrated again. My phone was always vibrating. A text from Dad. I'll be picking you up today. Make sure you're ready to go when I get there. That's kind of surprising. Again, how exactly did... Where's the questions? I quickly headed back to my locker and got my things before waiting for Naomi and Zuzu. Hey, are you ready to go? As ready as I'll ever be. Actually, my dad's picking me up. Really? Okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. Not really. We'll drive home together next time. Tell your dad that we've got you covered from now on. Right. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Even while I laughed, something didn't seem right. My dad texted me to say this. Why was he going to pick me up? Had I done something wrong? I didn't know. I wave goodbye to Naomi and Susan before heading off to the usual spot where my dad picks me up. I took the time to listen to my music while I waited. to go to another Rise of the Phoenix concert. Eventually I'd play the entire album with no one showing up. What the hey? That is never late, especially not this late. I couldn't dial my dad's number again, but as soon as I pressed call, it disconnected and read a signal disconnection area message. What the? No signal area? How did I not have a signal? I never tried my phone at all if I bars for signal. He must be in a dead zoo. Before I could finish, a group of hands grabbed at my hands, feet and covered my mouth, but I screamed into the hand over my mouth, struggling to pull away from the hands grabbing at my limbs. It felt disgusting and scary, feeling their hands on me. I needed to stop. Hey! Don't dirty up Malix's prey! The voice, which sent a fearful shiver down my spine, whispered into my ear, but actually that sounded like it shouted into my ear, but I'll let it go. You're coming with me, Miss Anderson. Oh, yay! I go with the devil's marvellous. <laughs> How are you? I couldn't fathom what was happening, but before I knew it, I was blindfolded and my limbs were quickly tied up. I felt myself being carried somewhere and was shoved into something that echoed the interior of a bus or a van. The doors closed and off I was taken, unsure of where I was going and why. All I knew was that I was in trouble. Again. All I saw was darkness. I felt numb as I was taken to a place I didn't know of. I couldn't even move my lips to scream. Sounds zipped past my ears. First of the interior of the car, then the outside, then echoed space with whispers and cackles of people vibrating through it. However, the wrapper on my eyes was eventually removed. Thank God for that, from my face, and my bones were cut. It took a while for my eyes to adjust, but I found myself in a warehouse surrounded by devils, including Malix, who was smoking at me. Why they were using a car instead of just teleporting here, I don't know. Maybe they don't want to draw attention, I'm guessing. Nicely done! <laughs> I'm sure those little shits will come running to find you when they realize you didn't return to your precious little mansion. They'll search everywhere for you. Oh, lovely! Trigger happy! It's gone trigger happy again! Look at him, he's smiling happy, he just was playing with his gun again. Malik walked over and set the barrel of his gun against the skin between my eyes once more. He, he likes he likes pointing between my eyes and doing shit with her. It'll be so funny when they find your dead body instead. Uh uh. Israel. All of a sudden, a bright purple light engulfed the room, causing the devils around me to cover themselves. You asked for it. What the? Guest wind rushed past me, almost forced me back. I covered my face with my arms, bracing myself and standing my ground. I tried to th peek through my arms to see what was going on, but the light continued to shine brightly. As the 
death slowly started to die, the light began to fade, revealing Damien, with a blank expression staring coldly at Malix. Damien! I'm here, as I promised. Malix moved his arms from in front of his face and slowly took in the new sight in front of him. Quickly, Malik's face turned to that of pure evil delight. Out of the five pretty boys, you summoned the pathetic one? What a fucking moron! Shut up, Malix! Damien stared at Malik, silent and fiercely cold. Damien began to walk towards Malik one step at a time. Malik, however, brought up his gun, pointing at Damien. So long, pretty boy! <laughs> I really thought pretty boy was supposed to be Eric. Malik pulled the trigger and let a bullet fly straight at Damien's head. I gasped, bracing myself for the result of the shot. However, Damien kept walking. Damien didn't fly back, nor did he flinch from the shot. I couldn't see the bullet wound, but I knew there had to be one in Damien's face. Miles began to quickly pepper shots into Damien's face, some of them passing completely through his head. There was no blood, no fire, nothing. It was as if Damien didn't really exist, as he walked towards the now frightened devil. What crap spell is this? Damien finally reached Malik's. The devil jabbed Damien's head towards the ground, making Damien's body fall and slam into the concrete. As the body settled onto the ground, it slowly began to burn away in purple flames. Malik scratched his teeth. A distraction. Where are you, Damien? Okay, so he can do illusions? Is that what Damien's doing? So he can create like doppelgangers himself? Malice scanned the room like a hungry dog, hunting for its final meal. Malice's body began to glow with fierce red color and anger from the situation. The remaining devil stared, trying to figure out what to do. Help Malice or watch in silence. Eris, however, walked up beside me and crossed her arms as she watched with a new smirk on her face. Come out! The air instantly went from frantic to still in energy. What could have been described in tone as the colour red quickly turned into a deadly mix of purple and black as everything began to blend together all at once. Damien's voice finally replied however. His voice seemed different. What's wrong, Malik? Are you afraid of me now? I was suddenly afraid. Somehow Damien didn't fit right with how I knew him. He sounded otherworldly. His voice was dripping with an almost sadistic tone as he spoke through the air. Really, I like it. Afraid of a pretty boy like you. <laughs> you don't even have the balls to face me head on. You're the one who's afraid. Malix, you haven't even shot him successfully. You have not even made a hit on him. You have not actually made him bleed. Malix, you completely missed him. Looking into Malik, however, I could tell he was off. Something about what Damien was doing was keeping Malik in place. Oh, I'm not afraid of you. In fact, I know very well you're afraid to move right now. You are practically screaming it in your mind. In a fit of insane rage, we're going to shoot and yell, and the bullets fly into the ceiling. Shut the hell up! Damien's demonic laughter filled the room as a group of dark figures appeared around Malik's, walking towards him slowly and menacingly. In defense, Malik fired shots at each entity around him, causing them to fall and fade away into purple flames. However, that didn't stop more from appearing around him and closing in on him. Malik's became frantic. What was the extent of a demon's power? And was this the extent of it? Ooh, no, nah, this is Damien. Just totally out pissed right now, because, you know, we're not to you. I suddenly felt a pair of hands cover my eyes tightly, pulling me against someone's chest. I gasped but was stopped from putting their hands off my face. It's me. Don't look. Sam! Hi there! Good to see you. Well, not really to see you, but hi. How are you? When did you get here? I 
Please listen carefully and let the last two words linger in my mind. Don't look. Why? What was being hidden from me? I want you to know, but something told me to obey Sam's command. I could still hear Malik's screams of agony and the sound of ripping flesh. The smell of blood was covered by the harsh odor or ash and fire. Maybe it was better that I wasn't able to see. Damien! Enough! What was Damien doing? <laughs> Almost instantly after James' command, the sound stopped. The only thing anyone could hear was the sound of dripping blood. What did Damien do? At least let me dispose what's left of him. 